welcome back to the channel. It's Lauren. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're doing well. Today for Singles Week, I'm gonna be creating my own custom Natasha Denona palettes. I talk about this all the time. I talk about how the Natasha Denona palettes, um, all of them except for the mini palettes, the shadows are able to pop out. And so what makes that so awesome is that not only when you buy them are you getting a, a pre-made palette that she's designed, but if you kind of buy into the Natasha Denona universe, <laughs> you then have the option to start creating and customizing your own palettes. And so to me, that is so intriguing, that's so exciting. Not a ton of brands do that, and definitely not a lot of more luxury brands, I would say. So I think it's a really unique and awesome thing about Natasha Denona, and I love it. So I've bought quite a few palettes in the last couple of years. I've really kind of expanded that part of my makeup collection. This pretty much looks like the Biba, but it's different, I can promise you. Like this is the gold, oh my gosh, it's chaos over here. Okay, this is what my gold palette looks like currently after doing my palettes. I'm so excited. There might be a spoiler in the thumbnail, but I'm gonna be creating a custom midi palette as well as one of the large pans because they do have different size pans. So I created a custom one of each and it was so fun to do. I really highly encourage you if you have Natasha Denona shadows to get in there, rearrange them. You can always move them back. I do suggest labeling them one way or another so that way you can put them back exactly how they were. But it's so awesome that you can kind of destroy, you know, the Natasha Denona palettes, but you're able to put them back together. It's not a permanent thing. And sometimes when you're depotting shadows out of like a pre-made static palette, meaning like the pans don't move around, they're not meant to come out. When you destroy that palette, there's no going back. That's kind of it, you know? And I just love that you can play around, have your fun, but at the end of the day, when you want it to go back to normal, when you want your original gold palette back, you can also have that and it's reversible. So anyway, without further ado, let's get into the palette making. I hope you guys enjoy the video. I encourage you to play along if you have some shadows, but um, yeah, let's get to it. All right, guys, so I have my four midi palettes here. These are the only four palettes I have from Natasha Denona that have the smaller midi size pans. And so I think I'm gonna start with a palette here first and then I'm gonna make a large one as well. I thought, why not do two? And I kind of have an idea for this. I feel like I have a lot of neutrals between all these palettes and I kind of wanna see what it'd be like to create almost like a rainbow palette, I guess, out of what I have here. So I'm thinking about doing something maybe purple, something blue, something pink, something like orange. I don't know, that's I don't. That's kind of what I was thinking. We'll see how it actually goes. First I need to pick a palette that I want to be like the one, the palette. And I like the look of the Zendo palette, I think, like the outside and stuff. I think that one will be really nice. So this is gonna be my initial palette and I'm gonna go through right now. I'm gonna pick out a bunch of shadows that I think could work, that I think are really pretty um, and start from there. I'm just using this tool, <laughs> a safety pin, um, but yeah, you could use something else because these all have, if you don't know, the holes on the back there. You can just stick something up through there and pop all the shadows out. And I don't know if you guys know this, if you haven't seen my past videos, I've already done the work of uh, labeling each of these so I know where to put them back um, when I want them to be their regular palettes again. So I'm gonna get to work and start picking out some shadows and getting this situated. Okay, so I have my empty palette here. These are just some extra shades. I might keep this peach for now. I'm just gonna stick these in another palette for the moment. I don't know if I have everything I'm gonna need right now, but I feel pretty good starting off. I'm gonna zoom us in a little bit because I think I'm gonna try to like plan it out, lay it out on the table before I put them in just cause they're a little bit, you know, precarious. Why do all the work of putting it in when I'm gonna be switching things around? So I'm gonna zoom us in a little bit. It's so interesting to see the singles out here from all the palettes. It's a lot more colorful than I thought I could probably get, I guess. So that's kind of interesting. I think 
one of the rows I'm gonna keep intact is the same green row from the Zendo palette. I'm gonna do it, I think, in like the dark green, like I think I'm gonna do it like that, but I'm trying to keep the colors down by column. I thought that that would be nice, so, but yeah. Okay, so next, I think I wanna do something kind of yellow and golden. Um, I don't know the order I want, so I'm really just focusing on the columns first and I can always move the columns around. I know I have this like really beautiful gold. I think this is called True Bronze or something from the bronze palette, but I think that would be nice. And then this is a pretty nice yellow. It kind of looks pumpkin-y or like almost orange, but I think it works for that. Um, I think making a purple row will be pretty easy. Right now it's kind of weird because I'm basing the palette off of aesthetic, like what it'll look like, as opposed to like, I love mo more shimmers instead of mattes. Um, Cause right now <laughs> we're putting a shit ton of mattes in this thing, but this one's kind of just to get, it's like an exercise. This palette to me is just like, let's see how fun we can make this thing. This is definitely the most purple purple so I definitely want to use that one I want to put this one in so badly but I think it's just too neutral like I really am trying to pack as much color as I can into this palette so I think it's better to do that I have only two more rows left I definitely want to do some type of pink theme so I have this like kind of magenta I have this light pink that's kind of fun um, and then I think maybe something like this. It's like a shimmery kind of peachy pink. And then last, it's tough. I kind of want to go orange. Like I think something orange would be nice, maybe. And then um, I feel like I should have some type of like orange shimmer. This one is kind of nice or maybe even that orange. Maybe those two instead of this cream. Yeah, I kind of think that's gonna be the best I can get. And wow, look at how colorful <laughs> this set of shadows is. I didn't even get to use the blues, but I didn't have a third blue anyway, so I kind of just scrapped that. All right, so here are the colors. I don't know what the best order to put these in is. I feel like it would go yellow first, then we could transition that into oranges and then transition that into pinks. Let's just do this, this will be simpler. Uh, but it seems like green then should be actually on the front because green to yellow maybe, like that. I think that's pretty good. I could always start it with purple though and then do this. I kind of liked it the other way. I don't know why. Um, I think I'm gonna do it with the greens going to yellows in that way. So um, I'm gonna put it in the palette. I think I've made the decision. Wow, oh my gosh. I have my own rainbow Natasha Denona palette, you guys. That is so crazy. It looks so official when it's actually in, you know, like the pans are in here. I actually think it looks better inside here. It's a, a bit more of like, a muted and saturated rainbow palette. So interesting. Okay, I'm gonna swatch this, but first I'm gonna put these shadows away so that way I can just kind of have them out of our lives. Ooh, something about this color story, adding these blues to these reds and kind of coppers. I don't know, something about it kind of made it pop in a weird way. Okay, let's take a look at this palette again though. I definitely wanna swatch it for you guys. It is just, I think, so stunning. There's something about it that reminds me of like Crayola crayons, but a little bit more grown up. Like there's something that's like, the luxe ver, like I don't know, the luxe version or like the grown up version, you know? I don't know, I like really think it's cool. I literally didn't know how it was going, but I am very happily surprised. So let's swatch this thing out. I'm gonna leave the color names down below for each palette so that way you can know what the name is. I don't know the names, I don't have those with me, so I'm sorry. I'm gonna swatch them down in columns since I think that makes the most sense.
Wow, can you believe this rainbow is from Natasha Denona shadows? Like, I'm still kind of in shock that I got something so rainbow um, out of what felt like so, like a sea of neutrals. Um, it's pretty interesting to see these kind of contained here. Uh, I think what's really selling it as rainbow, what's really bringing it home is this like light pink. That one to me really, packs a bit of a punch and you know, it's very pink. Um, so is this purple, although it's a little bit muted, still wearable, but it's pretty damn purple. This is such a punchy color and the green, those help to really make everything look like such a rainbow. So um, the mattes are definitely doing the heavy lifting here because it's almost all mattes. There's only three shimmers. So there's like this kind of golden one, a pink kind of peachy one, and then a purpley with like a blue spot sparkle. Some are that cream formula, but still, oh, I guess this is a satin, um, but it doesn't have a ton of shine. It's a lot of those mattes, but I'm excited to kind of see what I can do with this, like see if I reach for it. Um, definitely super fun. I'm not sure what other like middies I don't have that would really add more color because I know I'm missing the retro, I'm missing the glam palette, and I want to say that's those are the only middies that I'm missing. Oh, and the Metropolis that had definitely like a blue would have been in there to help make some really nice, you know, a blue column if I wanted. So I think it might be those three though that I'm missing. Um, but anyway, this I think is still really stunning and really beautiful. I'd love to know your thoughts, kind of a fun one. And I'm just so shocked at my rainbow arm here. Like what the heck? Um, okay. Anyway, let's move on to the other, like the larger shadows. I'm hoping that I can really create something unique, but I'm, I'm probably not gonna go so, you know, legitimately rainbow or, or trying to do something like that. I wanna create a color story that I'm gonna use with neutrals, but something kind of spicy and my, my own. So let's get working on that. All right, so it's pretty obvious to see I have a lot more of the larger pan eyeshadows from Natasha Denona. These are all removable in the same exact way as those smaller ones. So I have so many options. I could definitely do something rainbow if I wanted. I mean, the Circo Loco alone has so many options there, but the blue purple palette, the green brown palette, I mean, even the Trio Chrome has some really interesting colors as well even this five pan and of course the gold has just beautiful like blues and really beautiful duochrome. So I think what's gonna make this easiest is to go through and just pick shades that I think are interesting that I'd maybe want to put in the palette and then go from there. I think that will help me kind of narrow things down. And then from those shadows, like let's say I cut this in half or a third, from then those shadows, I feel like it'll be easier to pick what I actually want. So I'm gonna go through, pick some stuff up. I'm definitely thinking for this palette though. Um, I want something definitely neutral. I'm probably going to travel with this palette very soon. So I want to have something that I can get tons of different looks out of. Hopefully it'll be like the only thing I bring eyeshadow wise, like powder eyeshadow wise. So I'm keeping that in mind. I want like easy looks, everyday looks, single shadow looks. Um, I love duochrome. So I'm definitely going to put those in some flaky shades. I want some color just in case, but I also do like some neutrals. So that's what I'm thinking. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna get to it and just start picking out some shades, plucking them out, and then we'll go through. Okay, so here is the collection of shadows. I'm just gonna put them all here. It's a lot. 
<laughs> I'm gonna zoom us in a little, but I don't know why I'm getting like retro vibes. Like there's something kind of 70s to me happening here with the greens and the oranges, but there's purples. Like that's just what I'm getting. Um, <laughs> We'll see what happens. Uh, I hope that I can create something quite neutral, but I next need to pick what palette I want to keep these in. And I think I wanna go with one of the plastic ones instead of like the gold palette. Although, I mean, this, you know, with like a retro theme, I kinda love it, you know what I mean? But I think I'm gonna go instead with the duochrome palette, the trichrome. So I'm gonna clean this one out and put those shadows in other palettes. All right, so here we are. I'm gonna move these back to the side. Um, and I think kind of similar to before, I'm gonna pick the shades that I know for sure I want in here and then I'm gonna build stuff around that to kind of flesh out an actual palette. That's what I'm hoping. And I'm gonna create it here instead of in there so I don't have to poke things out. Some shades I know I definitely want. It's hard because they don't all have like the names, but this one here is called Skin um, and it's actually a duplicate. Like I have two of these shades. One came in, I don't know if it was the green, brown or blue purple palette, but I love this just all over the lid. Easy one and done look for me. So, so pretty. I know that shade is called Skin. Um, and I definitely want that in here because I know I will use it a ton. So that's going in here. And then I have two dual chromes. One is from the blue uh, purple, one is from the green brown. Um, I think it's like, it, this one isn't Sienna. This is something else. Um, Calypso blue maybe, uh, but this is like a red based blue duochrome, blue purple duochrome. Um, and then I think this one is called maybe Sienna and this one's more of like a, a red based kind of golden bronzy brown with like a green kind of blue shift. Those are all just stunning, like shimmery shades that I definitely use quite often. I think I've done one other video where I was creating my own custom five pans from Natasha Denona shades. Um, so I'll leave that link down below if you wanna check that out. But I created this beautiful custom five pan and it was stunning, so beautiful. It had these three shades in it and two mattes, I believe. And I used it so much. So I'm kind of putting that five pan into this palette just cause I know I'm gonna use it. Like I already have done that. <laughs> With those though, I definitely, there's a shade called Vintage Taupe. Yeah, Vintage Taupe is a pretty good transition type shade for me. Um, this one from the Trio Chrome though is kind of tempting. I kind of want to see what they look like. I forgot like as I was picking shadows how much Natasha Denona shadows deepen up on me. These both look pretty and seem like things I would use, you know, uh, both of them. I don't think they're too close to each other so I think I'm gonna put those in. I really liked the idea of this purple. I feel like the Trio Chrome palette has so many amazing mattes. I know it's like supposed to be showcasing the trichromes or multi-chromes that are in there, but really I think the mattes are where it shines. Like this stunning muted uh, lavender. It's like a grayed kind of muted lavender. I definitely think that would be beautiful in my palette. Um, I wanna add this. I think this is called Aubergine if I'm not mistaken. I think that would be a really nice companion shade to kind of deepen it up. I wanna do a couple other like lid shades. So uh, there's a few that are kind of similar here. I feel like all three of these, like I don't think I would need all of them. I'm gonna try to see which one I think I'm gonna wear the most. Oh wow, that one's so pretty. I think that one might be the winner. Hmm, <laughs> so similar and yet so different. I'm gonna do this one. This is from the blue purple palette. It's in the 15th place. So again, all the names will be down below. I'm gonna put that one in. This is another one from the blue purple palette. It's pretty deep. I don't know if I need that one. I wanna add some more color. Some of the colors I know for sure I wanna use are these greens. I love using like a chartreuse green. And so I think I wanna put both of these in there. Um, these are both from the trichrome palette. I just think they're stunning. And honestly, we're kind of getting a, a mauve purple neutral green thing going. So I might just stick to that because um, some of the golds from the gold palette I think are gonna do really well. I don't know if this is lime chrome or I don't know <laughs> what these ones are. <laughs> but I'm definitely putting those in here as well. Um, 
those are some of my favorite shades from Natasha Denona, so I wanna put those in. I think this might be Kava, and I think that would be a good addition. I really only have the space for two more shadows, which is kind of, intense. I definitely need something to deepen these shades up. So maybe something, I like this gray. I don't know why I'm so drawn to this like charcoaly gray, but I am like, I just, I like the idea of that. Uh, but I also have like this matte brown, which I also think is really pretty. Maybe I could do something like that. There's a part of me that feels like I'm gonna be sad. I think Kava can't stay. I don't think it can stay. I think that kind of helps to flush it out a little bit more. I also am sad that I can't get this green in, but I also have the other two greens from the gold palette. Let me see if I can maybe get one of those out. I'm like resisting the urge to like just put this in just to make it pop, but yeah, I'm not gonna do that. Or even like add more purple, but I just don't think realistically, um, like I'm going more neutral, I don't need that. Anyway, <laughs> I'm trying to keep it real. So I'm gonna swatch out these three and see if there's anything like too close. Like would I choose one of these over the other ones every time? Probably, let's see. I mean, this is so pretty. The middle one is the most true green, but I don't think I need that one. So that can go. I did think it would be nice to have like some type of highlight, but that doesn't really go with the theme. Like I feel like this theme's pretty thought out. Maybe, let's see what this one, cause this could look, Like I kind of like the way that's looking. This is more neutral. That has a little more spunk to it and I kind of like the idea of that. Um, but I want to swatch all three of them out. So let's see. This one is here. Oh, not that big of a difference. I'm trying to think what the difference would be in reality. This definitely is going to add a little more warmth. So there's that. I'm trying to think what I have, like this is pretty neutral. So I could use this as like a transition and then deepen up with this color, or I could use this as a transition. I mean, this one's more neutral too. Yeah, I know it's more boring, but I think like realistically what I'm gonna use or be happy with, I think I might be happy with that one. I don't know, I kind of like this. So I'm gonna put these shades off to the side and I'm gonna play around, I'm gonna zoom us in, but I'm gonna play around with placement of these and see what really pops. I mean, I think it's pretty, it's kind of mossy. Um, it's still kind of like colorful while still being very neutral. I think I'm accomplishing my goal here, I think, maybe. I do think it'd look really good in the gold palette though. Okay, I think, I think I'm gonna go with this combo. My brain's kind of turning into mush. I'm, I swear to you, placing shadows in a palette is an art form. It is an art form. So um, I'm gonna stick these in. That kind of adds legitimacy, kind of like the last one. So hopefully I'll like it even better. But yeah, I can't wait to see this in here and get some swatches of it. All right guys, so here is the palette. 
it didn't do what the other one did. The other one really popped. This one, it doesn't pop as much as I thought. I think that though, this might be one that like looks are deceiving. Like I feel like maybe this doesn't look as exciting as I want it to be, but I do think it's gonna be something that I actually use. Um, and sometimes aesthetically, things that look so beautiful, I don't use, like they're not as useful. And then the things that like look bland, look kind of, I don't know, uh, there's not like a lot of contrast, there's no popping shades, whatever. It's like the stuff that you actually use on a daily basis. So hopefully that's what this is, fingers crossed. But I'm gonna swatch this out and see what everything looks like. I'm gonna do the palette across and just kind of see, but um, yeah, let's see what this looks like swatched out. All right guys, so here is the palette swatched out. It's kind of interesting how cohesive I feel like this is. Like it's very much the same type of colors and the same type of tones. I don't know, it almost feels like there's repeats when there aren't. Like I don't know how to explain that. Like there's stuff that's different enough and I know on the eye they would look different enough, but um, yeah, I don't know. Not my favorite palette as a whole. I think there's a lot of looks, but I also feel like every look you would do this palette would turn out pretty fucking similar. Like, you know, it's gonna be a neutrally type shade, something with like a green pop or an all green if you're going, you know, all the way there. Something kind of mauve -y purple, um, cool toned, maybe a mauve -y purple that goes more warm toned, maybe a mauve -y purple that goes more cool toned, um, you know? That's kind of, that, that is the, that is the palette. Um, whereas, you know, there's other palettes I think could give you a variation of those looks on top of other things. But um, I'm gonna keep it this for now. Like I'm gonna keep this. You'll have to let me know what you guys think down below. Even these two shades kind of look similar. Like this one's definitely grungier and a little bit deeper. This one's a little bit brighter, but there's something about it almost looks like, did you swatch the same thing again? You know, I don't know. Anyway, well guys, these are my two palettes, my two custom Natasha Denona ones. Um, I do feel like I'm a little more partial to just like the aesthetic of this one. But again, I do think that this would be the one I'm actually like using, you know, um, every day. So it'll be interesting. I'll let you guys know, you know, as we go forward. I'm gonna do a look at this video, so that will be coming next. But let me know if you wanna see me do like a springtime palette because there were so many, like I felt like springy colors once I started taking apart the Trio Chrome and the Circle Loco. And I know there is a palette coming from Natasha Denona. Um, so I don't know, maybe I'll do that as part of that video or something, but let me know if you'd be interested in seeing that. I hope this inspired you to play along and get your Natasha Denona palettes out, rearrange them, get re-inspired. Um, it's super fun. I love that it's a luxury like brand that you can do that with. And I feel like that's pretty unique on the market and um, I'm excited to play around with these. So let's do a all right. look. All right guys, let's do a look. I have both the palettes. I don't think I'm gonna be using the rainbow one. Thought I'd show it to you in this lighting. Oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> it is a beauty, uh, but I don't think that's the one I'm gonna use. I think I'm gonna go truly neutral today and kind of show you what I plan on wearing kind of coming up. So that's this palette in the light, in this lighting and this setup. So just so you can see that. But um, yeah, I've already primed my lids. I basically have just been using this. I really like it. Um, it almost looks like its own color. It's from Sigma, it's the Sorbet. I mean, it is its own color, but <laughs> it almost could be like its own eye look um, if I didn't want to do anything else. But of course, if I'm already doing all this, like I'm gonna do something. Anyway, let's get into it. I think I think I'm, it's tough. I'm gonna use this lightest shade first. I think that's the lightest one. So I think actually I'm just gonna go in with skin. Um, that's gonna be just an all over lid shade. On super simple days, this would be it. 
sometimes it's hard to find that perfect color, you know, that perfect one shadow look, and everyone's is gonna be a little bit different or potentially different because it really is based off of your own skin tone, how deep, you know, your preference is, what will be perfect like a wash for you. But for me, I've found that this color really is so great for an easy everyday. And the metallic in it, it's just shimmery enough to give me some life, to give me some light and like, lift I guess without being too metallic where it'll look weird if I go in my crease too much. It's really just quite beautiful. This with a little bit of liner or mascara would be a very easy everyday look for me. But I'm not gonna leave today's look there. I think I want to add in Oh, there's a part of me that wants to add some of the purple in. I think that'd be kind of fun. Yeah, I am gonna do it, but first I'm gonna add some of this light brown shade, just kind of all in the crease. I have to be careful because whenever, whenever I use Natasha Denona shades, they do deepen up quite a bit, so I really tap off and really keep my brush quite wispy. But I'm just laying a bit of a base down. That added just a little bit more definition. Now I'm gonna go in with that like first lightest purple, the matte, and this I'm gonna start working in that outer corner. I don't feel like I need this small of a brush, but alas, here we are. Okay, but I'm kind of obsessed with how that's purple, but still like sultry, you know, without, I don't know, it's not so bright. I think it's so like understated and really beautiful. I think I'm gonna put a little bit of this shade. It's not skin, so that's this first shade I used. I'm gonna go in with this one. Um, this one seems more metallic though, so I'm just gonna keep this to the lid and kind of just tap it on with my finger. And I'm just gonna re-go in with that purple just to make sure it's nice and blended. I'm using the bigger brush now so I can get a nice diffused look since I've already packed on some of that color. So into this look, I think it's so freaking sexy. I'm gonna use this Pixie Pencil. This is one of my favorite looks for like a sultry under lash line look because it's a shimmer. This one I think is called Rose Glow or something. So I'm gonna put it on my lower lash line and then I'm blending out with my finger. And then I'm gonna go back over it with that skin shade. And like I said, I'm taking that skin shimmery shade we used initially and I'm just kind of blending out, buffing out with that. I also think just using that purple on the lower lash line would also be a really like sexy look. I don't have just like a good brow bone, but I'm gonna use this shade. I'm pretty sure this is the shade Piggy um, from the blue purple maybe palette. <laughs> I think maybe. Um, and I'm just gonna be using that on my brow bone, kind of just a light pink. You could also just use your highlighter, whatever. And I'm gonna put it on and really blend it out you might have to bring in your other blending brush to make sure you don't have any harsh lines. Sometimes I'll do my brow bone first before I even go in with other things. So I don't have to do that extra step and it always seems to help. I don't know if this is gonna ruin it because this does have a red base on it. But I think, um, I think I'm gonna add the green. Maybe I'll add this light green on my inner corner and see how that goes. I love a light green on the inner corner. I feel like it adds something kind of fun. I'm gonna keep it kind of low key. I say that, but I might, I might do something <laughs> more intense, we'll see. I'm gonna put a little bit of this shade on top. It's like a shimmery one from the gold palette.
It's like a little bit of a darker inner corner, but there's something about it that works and it doesn't make my eyes look too dark. So I'm kind of liking it. It's still kind of sultry and subtle. Mm, I like it. Okay, I'm gonna add some mascara. I'm gonna add some brow mascara too. I keep forgetting that before I start filming. <laughs> Uh, so I'm gonna add that and I'll show you guys the final look. All right guys, so here is the final look. I'll zoom you in. I think it's really pretty and understated. Obviously the green adds something, but I think because it's not as high shine as maybe I normally go, there's something about it that still adds like a sultriness and I feel like that toned downness makes it a little bit more neutral and like, you know, wearable as well. I could have gone a little bit deeper um, with the purple if I wanted to, but I feel like this is still like sultry and I feel done up, but I, I would still wear this like out every day. Like it'd be a, an easy look for me to still do daily. So I don't know, that purple I feel like is a stunning, like a superstar, like a, a low key superstar, you know? Cause it, it's pretty unique in that definitely purple, but also quite neutral. I don't know how it does it. Okay, anyway. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and seeing my custom Natasha Denona palettes. I had so much fun creating them and I really hope that it inspires you. If you have a large or even a smaller Natasha Denona collection, even if you only have a couple palettes, um, I hope you can get in there, re rearrange some stuff, have some fun, kind of become your own palette maker, if you will. But yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying singles week. And other than that, I will see you in a video tomorrow. Bye guys.